This is the Moto G Power 5G 2023 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. Now heat needs to be applied to the camera bezel to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then the camera bezel can be peeled off. The glass camera lens can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. So you won't need to actually disassemble the phone or remove the camera bezel to replace that. 17 T6 or Torx 6 screws need to be removed. Now a pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. There's some graphite film to help transfer heat and there's an antenna flex cable here and here. Looking at the other side, there are more antenna flex cables around the border and the LED flash board is located here. This is the flex cable for the fingerprint scanner and the fingerprint scanner itself is located on the side. The battery cable can now be disconnected followed by the rest of the flex cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. Now a single T6 or Torx 6 screw, which is holding on the main board, needs to be removed. On the main board, there's a 50 megapixel primary camera and a 2 megapixel depth and macro lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. As for the camera connectors, they can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, and some more graphite film and copper tape on the shields to help transfer heat. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the other side, as well as the proximity sensor, and we can see the 16 megapixel front-facing camera. There's some more copper tape on the back shields, as well as a lot of thermal paste. Once the shield on the back has been removed, we can see more thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM. The two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard, as well as the flex cable. There's a single T6 or Torx 6 screw, which is holding on the subboard. So looking at the subboard, there's a rubber gasket around the charger port itself, as well as the headphone jack. 
The primary microphone is located here. And there's another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. Here's a look at the other side. Now to remove the bottom speaker assembly, the flex cable first needs to be peeled off. And then it can be lifted up and removed. There's more graphite film over the speaker assembly to help transfer heat. And here's a better look at the speaker itself. As for the battery, there are no pull tabs to help you pry it off. So you'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the flex cable for the screen which is right up to an opening in the mid frame. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, as well as the back housing, disconnect the flex cable for the battery and the screen, and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure we run this flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom and it's held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. And the flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side, and if you needed to replace that, you'd have to just gently peel it off. There's also one more liquid damage indicator sticker, which is located here, underneath the SIM tray on the frame. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.